Okay. Well, we obviously have a lot of code here that's good, but it's not going to compile. So let's see if we can make this compile. Just glancing at this, I noticed I needed a semicolon there. But the bigger issues are we don't have a clock class, nor do we have a way of sleeping. But the rest of this actually looks like it just might work. So let's uh, let's add a clock class. Control Alt L. Clock should it be part of our game or part of our engine? Hopefully, it makes sense that it's part of our engine. We're going to use it in several places. And let's do add new folder. And I'm going to say timing. How about timings or timing? Oh, so we'll start with timing. Why am I calling it timing? Why am I making a special folder? Well, later we're going to do some profiling. We're going to put some profiling tools in to our folder here. So I'm going to I'm going to make a folder just for things like this clock and such. So let's add new item. Remember, as we add items, like we added the clock test here, we need to add them to our subversion as well. I did that offline. And let's call this clock. And pound if and def engine clock uh, h and control l control v v pound define pound and if and namespace namespace what namespace were we using I don't remember let's go back to math and look at vector oh I just call it math here uh, maybe I should call it Jamie's engine or something I'll call it namespace timings. I call it timing or timings? Timing class clock curly curly semicolon. I'm going to do a new vertical tab group. So I have this over here so I can know roughly. I know I'm going to need to initialize. So bool initialize and bool shutdown. And we have time elapsed last frame. So let's do float time elapsed last frame. That should be a const function because it's not going to change the state of our clock class. If you don't know what this means on the end of a function, go look at my const correctness videos in the C++ playlist. Uh, and then time elapsed last frame and then there was new frame. So let's put that one right here. Void new frame. And we could make this return to float which would be the time last since last frame. We could, either way. Okay, let's Save that. Let's go over here and include it into this file. Pound include timing slash clock dot h. That should get rid of many of the squigglies. Control shift s. Uh, we need a using using timing clock clock. Okay, good. Why is this? What's the pound include? Open. Cannot open source clock h. Because I call this clock CPP. Wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm writing header code. In, oh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Add new item. Clock. You probably noticed that and uh, didn't tell me because you can't tell me. Control A, Control X, Control V. Push that into the H file. And then over here, just for tickles, pound include clock H. Okay, we'll come back to this CPP file. Uh, all the, okay, all the squigglies are gone. We found included clock.h. And why are these expects freaking out? Expect true error function is inaccessible. Oh, that's right. We should probably make these public. Put them in the public section. Come on, until you send it's good. And time elapsed. Elapsed. Elapsed last frame. Control C, Control V. I'm just looking for the red squigglies. Generally, IntelliSense is dead on, but once in a while it lies. But for the most part, it's dead on right here. So the only thing I'm expecting red squigglies on now is this sleep. We haven't found anything we can use to do to do our sleeping with. So, so let's do that. I think we're good. Does this build? Probably shouldn't build. Sleep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's grab all this, control C, go over here and paste it, get rid of this. I want to define these functions. Now that I have declarations, highlight this, control K F to back it up. And then I need to put clock colon colon on the front of all these and then put curlies like this. But when I have a lot of tedious typing here that I'm gonna to have to do over and over again, I want to speed that up. So one way I cheat, or not cheat, but maybe I'm smart is I use Visual Studio macros. So I'm going to put my cursor here. I know if the keystrokes I use to make this 
initialize be a definition for this declaration up here. I know that the keystrokes are going to be same here, same here, same here, same here, and I don't want to do those same keystrokes over and over and over again. So I'm going to have Visual Studio record those keystrokes via its macro uh, functionality that's in here and then just have it play that back. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my cursor right here at the beginning of the line. Uh, Control Shift R to begin recording. We get this this up here saying, hey, we're recording a macro. We're watching everything you do. That's kind of eerie. Uh, hold down the control key, hit the right arrow. I'm going to type clock, colon, colon, hit the end key, backspace, enter, curly, enter, curly, enter, down, and I'm going to hit home just so I can feel good. The home key, push it back to the home, even though it was at home already. Click stop recording, and then watch. I'm going to hit control shift P, control shift P, control shift P. Control Shift P, and there we go. We now have all the definitions here. Now, why am I getting red squigglies though? Red squigglies. Name followed by oh, <laughs> I forgot the namespace. Let's do it. Namespace. What do I call it? Timing. Timing. Control End. Control A. K F. Control L. Red squigglies gone. All right, and then down here and in initialize. Let's just stub these out. Remember, we're using test-driven development. We already wrote the test, so that's good. But I want to make sure this compiles and runs, and I want to see the red uh, error messages on the screen before we actually start implementing this clock class. So return false. Return false. Indicate that all this is bad. New frame. Do nothing. And then time elapsed last frame. We're going to return a negative one time, a totally bogus time. But I must return something to make the compiler happy because I promised that I would. Okay, so now we got the issue of the sleep. How, what are we going to do with the sleep? Because this is this is just the function I was assuming was there, and I do that a lot. I'll assume functions are there because it's kind of my way of pseudocoding without really pseudocoding. Uh, most of the syntax was perfectly fine C++. So I was just assuming that I had a sleep. Where am I going to get a sleep? Well, I can pull in another API. I can search around. I was hoping gtest had a sleep, but I couldn't find one in their documentation. So as generally will be the case. Qt will come to the rescue. I also noticed Qt has a testing framework as well. We could have used Qt as our testing framework. I decided to use Google Test just because that's what I knew. That might be a bad decision though, uh, to just pick something because that's what I know. But that's also another lesson is what programmers know they'll generally use. So the more you can help them know, the better. Anyway, we need a good sleep. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to get that.